Gracious Father in heaven, as we come together to study your word, we ask for that blessing to come from on high that will open our ears and open our hearts and open our minds to what you want us to get out of this lesson, Lord. Not what we think it means, not what profess it to be, but Lord, show us exactly, exactly what you want us to gather from this lesson that our lives may be changed by studying your word. And I pray for Cynthia and Craig and pray for myself, Lord, that as we, as we do this and as we, we go about in the world, that we, we exude your love and your care to others. Lord, I just pray that there will be others who will join us and ask for a blessing upon them and ask for your word to be in our mouths and in our minds and in our hearts. I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Now, I have a, I have a question before we get started. We've already Jackie, started. Oh, well, now that we're started, I have a question. <laughs> on, on verse 13, cable. And I, in my little side thing, it says displeasing or dirty. Is that what cable means? C-A-B-U-L. Cobble. Cobble, yeah. He said, and he uh, called them the land of Cobble unto this day. Does that mean disgusting? Binding, it says in my. Oh, Mine, it says. Uh, sterile. A sense of, a sense <laughs> of limitation, sterile. Kabul, the name of two places in Palestine. Interesting. Okay. It's kind of the name of the capital of Afghanistan today, Kabul. Oh, is that, and they changed the spelling? It's just with a K, but it's otherwise same, spelled the same. All right. Well, I was uh, reading over that. And mm -hmm. I thought it was because it was displeasing. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a good name. <laughs> okay because it was it wasn't a very happy thing that he got those cities yeah yeah he wasn't happy with those cities might not must not have been good ones okay now we can move on um you, you no, no, probably already no, talked you... about it by the way but i'll just say in verse two <laughs> You have the Lord appearing the second time uh, is is very interesting language. Oh. Even though he's appearing the second time here to Solomon, it's it's actually this whole passage about the building and dedication of the temple is actually about the second appearing of Christ or the second coming of Christ. You know, yeah. When was the first time that he appeared to Solomon? Uh, he, he, he appeared to him in, at Gibeon again in the high places. Okay. okay. And we asked for, you know, he asked him what he wanted and he asked for wisdom and then he gave him right, that's right. wisdom and everything else. And now he appears a second time. I didn't, you know, until last week when we were studying it, I didn't realize, I didn't think about the if my people. If the Israelites follow me, you know, I've read that before and I'm, it just, and if they walk before me, yeah. he covered his bases. Okay. You see, the, you see the whole second appearing here is particularly connected with him establishing the throne of David forever. Mm -hmm. And us either coming into harmony with him or being cut off. Very interesting. And then they got a cut off. And then they got cut off. I think, and you know. Sobering. Well, I think God was showing them that that could happen. If it did, this is what will happen. I mean, he was warning them. I think he's warning us. Yeah. That this is what's going to happen to us. Right. Well, I pray yes, that. Yes, he was warning them, but. <laughs> We know this is written for all of us for all time. And we, we always portray it as something God's doing, but it's actually what we're doing. Mm -hmm. It's our choices. Yeah, that's right. You see that in verse is it nine, and they shall answer because they forsook the Lord their God. He doesn't hide things from us, does he? Yes. And so we were doing 15 to the end. Is that what yes. we're doing? Mm -hmm. Or. Or anything thereof of all of it. 
<laughs> wherever it leads us. So if we, how many verses is that? To me it's 13. And this is the reason of the levy which King Solomon raised. For to build the house of the Lord and his own house in Milo and the wall of Jerusalem and Hazor and Medigilo and Gizer. For Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had gone up and taken Gizar and burnt it with fire and slain the Canaanites that dwelt in the city and given it for a present unto his daughter Solomon's wife. And Solomon built Gizer and Bethron, like the nether, and Balad and Tamar in the wilderness in the land. 19. And all the cities of store that Solomon had and cities for his chariots, cities for his horsemen, and that which Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem and in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion, and all the people that were left of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, which were not the children of Israel. 21. Their children that were left after them in the land, whom the children of Israel also were not able to utterly to destroy, upon those did Solomon levy a tribute of bond service unto this day. But of the children of Israel did Solomon make no bondmen, but they were men of war, and his servants, and his princes, and his captains, and rulers of his chariots, and his horsemen. These were the chief of the officers that were over Solomon's work, 550 which bear rule over the people that wrought in the work. But Pharaoh's daughter came up out of the city of David unto her house which Solomon had built for her. Then did he build Milo. And three times in the year did Solomon offer burnt offerings and peace offerings upon the altar, which he built unto the Lord. And he burnt incense upon the altar that was before the Lord, so he finished the house. And King Solomon made a navy of ships and... Yes, okay. Which is beside yeah. Loth on the shore of the Red Sea in the land of Idiom. And Hiram sent the navy his sent in the navy his servants, shipmen that had knowledge of the sea with the sermons of Mount Solomon. And they came to Opar and stretched from thence gold, 420 talents, and brought it unto King Solomon. The levy, that's what he charged them? Yes, it's interesting. Well, it, it could be like a tax or it could be like forced service instead of a tax. Yeah, I mean, that seemed to change. In my head, it seemed to change from the levy to when he was the other levy. It's interesting that that it's only on the you know the non Hebrews. Right now, he went in twenty one. It says their children that were left after them. That's the ones that he had just destroyed in verse twenty, right? Um, because they didn't utterly destroy them. Yeah, that's right. The, you know, the, not just Solomon, but you know, since the time they came into the land of Canaan, they, they never fulfilled God's command to destroy all those nations. But they're destroyed to this day. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, it was a king of Egypt that made all did all this destruction, right? Back yeah. In six, back in sixteen, it wasn't Solomon yeah, going through doing his job, he left it to somebody else. Yeah, it's interesting. So the king of the south comes up and he he destroys the Canaanites and gives it as a present to yeah. <laughs> king, the king of Israel and his wife. Daughter. In a way, but of course he, it's the same thing, but I give it to my daughter. My daughter, you know, it just happens to be the wife of so the king of Israel has married the daughter of the king of Egypt, the king of the south. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. <laughs> and of course, he was not a an Israelite. So they're in, a, in alliance with the king of the south, essentially, which of course wasn't in God's plans. And yet we see here God blessing Solomon. Yeah. And he answered him. And he answered him. So this all took place before Solomon started worshiping other gods, right? 
Um, well, he's pretty much worshiping other gods if he's taking an Egyptian wife. <laughs> yeah, that that was kind of like the beginning of bad decisions. But he he still was was mostly being faithful at this time. Yeah. But he was would continue to make the bad decisions, especially related to the wives. I wonder why he thought that was okay. You know, he I just human reasoning instead of God's reasoning. He did it to make alliances with other nations. It surely had to have been a better way. That was a common practice then, it is still in part today, that, that ruling families intermarry as a, a way to cement alliances and peace. That and the crown on the head, just does something to the psyche, doesn't it? Yeah. But it was not in God's order to, to go about making peace with the other nations in that way. I wonder if that's where that word comes from. Or oh, old geezer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Just... Fortune is what it means. Um, Fortune? Portion. Portion. Like, uh, like some of something, a portion. So oh. it was a, a Levitical city on the border of Ephraim. Okay. Later became a Levitical city. I don't have a study, but well, I probably could fish around for one year. But I don't well, like to fish around. Can also mean a place cut off or a precipice. Formerly a royal city of the Canaanites. And the Canaanites are from King, right? Hmm. Right? Wasn't Cain sent to the Canaanites? I mean, what? Am I thinking wrong? Wait, say that again? Well, when Cain killed Abel. Yes. Isn't that where the, the, the Canaanites came from? Where? Uh, no, Canaanite is from the, it's the son of Ham is Cain. Uh, Cain. Oh, the son of Ham. Okay. The one who saw his father naked and right, right. Jo joked about it. And then the curse came on his son. Curse be Canaan. Okay. So it may actually have its root in Cain. I don't know. That's a good question. That's for some reason I've always connected him with that, but I, I don't have a good reason for thinking that. It's just always been... Well, I mean, it kind of sounds the same, but so the root of Canaan actually means to humble oneself or to kneel. <laughs> now I guess that can't be Cain. <laughs> Unless you learn to be humble. <clears throat> um, well, Cain is a different word. So, Cain means to possession. Smiths. What What do you use for a, for a reference, Craig? Uh, I use the Blue Letter Bible, and it, oh. it has a concordance, the strongest concordance built into it. I have the Blue Letter Bible on my phone. Yeah, it can do the same thing. You okay. might need, uh, I think, to look up things in the concordance, you need to be like connected to Wi Fi or have cell data. Um, but otherwise, the, the, the functionality is in the app and the phone, too. Cool. I have one to of check my that out. Favorite Bible apps. I use it all the time. Well, I've, I've been wondering, you know, because I don't want to get a Bible that gets distorted. I actually have an older one that did when I did a Bible study with um, one of our Bible workers. And he, we were reading, and I read it, and he picked on me. And he said, come on, now read it right. I said, this is what my Bible says. Hmm. It was totally two different verses. Hmm. So I, I'm aware that, you know, I wonder when I go on and get an app. But I picked that blue, blue letter app. I'm glad I did. Thank you. You're an answer to prayer. 
<laughs> Should we go on to 10? 10? Oh. Well, no, we gotta, we got to finish Chapter 9 here. <laughs> yeah, we haven't finished 9. Interesting that he has cities for chariots and cities for horsemen. He must have. Well, he had a lot, didn't he? Yes. First of all, he wasn't even really supposed to have. <laughs> he was. That was another one of the instructions. They weren't to take the kings weren't to take many wives, and they weren't to have many chariots. And he had cities of them. Because God wanted them to be dependent on Him. So yeah. But typologically, chariots are connected with thrones and what? horsemen we have with the seals. So it's kind of interesting. We have, oh, go ahead. It just amazes me that people are just willing to, to, I mean, nations are willing to just come and give him all this money and make him wealthier. Well, no, all that wealth didn't necessarily redound to God's glory. No, Satan no, no. often gives people wealth in order to deceive and destroy. You know, there was one, you know, I forget where it is, but it says there was one year where, you know, 666 talents of gold came into the treasury of Solomon, it tells us. Um, so that's curious. 166. So here we have a tribute of bond service, verse 21. We see God even uses you know, unbelievers to accomplish his purposes. Yeah, he does. Lays on them a tribute of bond service as the ruling king. But of the children of Israel did Solomon make no bondmen, but no. they were men of war, his servants, his princes, his captains, and rulers of his chariots, and his horsemen. Hmm. And then yeah. you got to build a, a military when you start taxing people and keep, keep taxing a heavier and heavier and heavier. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. they're going to rebel. That's just human nature. It's, so then you got to build enough of an army, navy, whatever to to quell the unrest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, we see the, the the men of the king of Israel were servants, willing servants. Uh, Christ has no unwilling servants. Amen. In the in one of the previous chapters, weren't we told about his court, how, what it took to just, was it feed them or something in one day? I can't remember. Mm. Yeah. I, remember, I know the passage that you're thinking of. It was a lot. <laughs> what, it, what it took them to feed people? Well, what, what, it, what it took to just keep his court. Yeah. Uh, there, there were like certain... You know, tribes or heads of tribes or something that were appointed to to provide for the king's table in in a you know rotation throughout the year, and then as part of that passage, it said what was needed every day for the king's table, which was a lot. <laughs> you know, he was feeding probably thousands of people. You know. I, I can't. The fathom. Government today, you know, the government takes everything to give benefits to. Chosen, select ones. I just can't fathom all that money. Hmm. I read it, uh, but it doesn't. He certainly was ultimately the, you know, he was the well, probably the wealthiest man to ever live. And still is, probably. Probably. Only when we're talking about that filthy lucre yeah, I mean, the Pope probably controls as much wealth now, but he doesn't actually own it. Solomon actually owned it. 
Yeah. Um, but we all just borrow that, don't we? Yeah. That's right. Yes, we do. It's yeah. really all gods. We just have a... That's right. It's on loan. Interesting yeah. that Solomon observed the, you know, all the males had to come to the place that God would name three times a year. And we see Solomon here making offerings three times a year. He's to some degree still observing the uh, observances that were appointed him as the king and as a as an Israelite. This is before he lost it all. Yeah, this is before, but he's he's already heading in the wrong direction a little bit. But having the Pharaoh's daughter as his wife probably was the first mistake, right? Yeah, that that seems to be a, a key and error here in this early time, where he was largely doing what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah, you don't think it's like like us a progression that yeah you, know, you you build up to things and then all of a sudden you're in way over your head. I think that it probably was. Do you, you think know. he was overwhelmed? Do you think he was overwhelmed? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think he wasn't wrestling against flesh and blood, but he he at times thought he was, and he he lost those battles. He <laughs> forgot where his wisdom really came from. Yeah, and, and thought it was from himself and not God. And, or he yeah. thought he was so wise he could. He, he could parlay with Satan and and win, and, and he's wrong. So Satan's wiser. Yeah. More subtle. Yeah, and, th and then when you try, then... I mean, we also are, put ourselves at God in certain situations, and we know better, and we can do it this way and still mm -hmm. you know, do what... Uh, we feel God wants us to do rather than following his way. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing to say that if we weren't in Solomon's place, that same thing wouldn't have happened. It, it, oh, exactly. Yeah. It just has less consequences in our lives. But, you know, when, you, when you're the king, it affects everybody. Right. <laughs> and it did. And a lot of times we don't think about it, but if this is the smartest man that the world has ever produced with God's help and all of a sudden not all of a sudden but and he goes astray hmm. you know oh. it it shows that you need to keep your eyes on the Lord and not and not okay. on the surroundings not what other people think of you not what you know what mm -hmm. you want to make yourself look like and w wisdom and intelligence is no no savior no guarantee. You know, the, the smartest being that God made in heaven fell and started all the problems. And right. the smartest man that ever lived, you know, he fell and, and made a disaster for a long time. So. Yes. The, the hubris of man that you're, you're smart makes you somehow special. Prophets and Kings, page 254. So gradual was Solomon's apostasy that mm -hmm. before he was aware of it, he had wandered far from God. Almost imperceptibly, he began to trust less and less in divine guidance and blessing and to put confidence in his own strength. Little by little, he withdrew from God that unswer unswerving obedience, which was to make Israel a particular people. And he conformed more and more closely to the customs of the surrounding nations. Mm. You know that's it. <laughs> is is a good, bad, or ugly? Is, that's what everybody wants to do. Is um, not everybody, but but typically, it's what you do is you conform to to what's the what's the norm, if you will. Hmm. Which is which is happening today. I guess this is God's way of showing us we have to be 
constantly aware of who we are, who he is, and what we're doing, our choices. I don't know why this jumped into my head, but to me it shows more and more all the time why you need a trinity ruling yeah. <laughs> for the checks and balances that the other two will put upon you. Mm -hmm. A very valid thought, Dan. Gathering the gold of Ophir. You see the Lord's work is very organized as chief officers who rule over the people. I wonder how many he had. Well, it says there were 550 chief oh, officers. There it is, right? That's a lot of chief officers. <laughs> a lot of opinions. Hmm. No, no, the officers aren't allowed to have opinions. They do, do what the king says. If you value your head. <laughs> it's not a democracy. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is right or not. 27 and 28 seems to be that Solomon sent, you know, Hiram's sailors along with some of his own to Opar and had to bring back gold. Yes. Yeah. On, on top of what he already had. I mean, this is a... Yes, he, he took the treasures that he had and actually the levy of bondmen and he built a navy of ships and then goes and gets the gold. Yeah. It's almost like he didn't think he had enough. Or maybe he didn't. No. He didn't have enough. With all that stuff he had, he had to take care of it. Mm -hmm. had, to, had to pay for it. Had to be yeah. owed. Powerful ruling countries don't build navies of ships and go into foreign lands and mine and take all their resources today, fortunately. <laughs> Un unless you happen to... You know... <laughs> Except all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> we usually say that with Europe in mind, but what did the first settlers here do? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> We've done the same thing and Central America and South America and like many Solomon other places. Said, there's nothing new under the sun. So when they took all of that gold, they left the cities desolate, I would think. Well, you, you don't know mm. that because, I mean, it, it usually takes an awful lot to, you know, take all the gold out. You mean there was some left? More than likely. Oh, yeah. I think that there were huge mines there. I don't think they were necessarily doing it by conquest, either. They just had to send men, enough men to work the mines, basically. But I think it was a very rich ore source. Of course, gold's a symbol of faith. I, I'm just looking at one commentary here, and this is yeah, basically I say you got to remember too that no vessel could perform could perform this voyage in less than three years. Hmm. Wow. Okay. okay. Because of the monsoons, and that more time uh, because of monsoons. Well, then that makes a difference too, doesn't it? I mean, they worked hard for it. Verse 25, so he finished the house. Again, of course, the house represents the redeemed, the living stones. Three times, too. Three times connected with it, yes. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Three coronations, three advents. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we've been able to meet again to study your beautiful word. Please continue to help us to understand uh, your word for us here in the book of Kings. Not just what happened then, Lord, but the, the principles and the patterns as they apply to us today. 
that we might take them to heart and be changed, and that we might know what to do, and that our faith might be strengthened, and that you might accomplish your plans and your purposes. Uh, keep and preserve us until we can meet again is our prayer. May it be in Jesus' name. Amen.